for almost four years now. And out of the four years, there's absolutely been spiritual warfare and obstacles that would occur before service. And it would be very obvious while the enemy is trying to distract, he's trying to um, discourage us from having church or somehow get in the way from people receiving today. Um, but Jesus always came through victorious as long as we could just keep pressing forward in faith. You know, the enemy will do that. He will cause a big ruckus, but he's really just like this tiny, tiny little guy, like scre screaming, but there's no power in that. There's no power in that. So when you can, and this is how it is in your life. If you can, with faith, know that the power of Jesus is so much more and that Jesus will always give you the victory as long as you can just believe this, not give in to the enemy's lies, then Jesus will will indeed always come through, always give you victory. Um, when a big uh, attack comes, it can feel like, oh, maybe this won't be as powerful. Like maybe church won't be as powerful today because all distracted or whatever and uh, or whatever it is in life, like because this attack comes and you're excited about something, you might feel like, oh, this isn't gonna be as good as what I thought, but that's not true. Feelings aren't truth. The enemy will make ruckus and chaos and da da da, but it's just noise. It's just noise. There's no power to that if we don't give that power. Even if it makes us a little flustered in the moment, if we can just keep moving forward in faith and, 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 and believe that this truth that you will speak to the mountain and the mountain will move. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, if you speak to the mountain, the mountain will move. So it reveals to us that there will be mountains in life. So we don't need to get flustered. We should be prepared, we should be aware. We should know when you are doing God's will, when you're doing the work of God, when you're going to seek God, you're in the action of seeking and finding the more of him, you should be aware that there will be mountains that'll pop up because the enemy does not want you to do the work of God. He does not want you to find the more of God. He does not want your spiritual eyes to be open. He does not want you to be set free. It's very important we know this because then we're not all um, so confused when we see a spiritual warfare. We're not flustered. We know this is just how it is. I'm in a spiritual war, but the power Jesus has given me will always be greater than the devil's. So I am guaranteed victory. I am guaranteed victory. You have to have this mindset. Every day we put this armor of God on, we're going to the battlefield, but we should have joy and excitement in this. No matter what the weapon that comes your way, no matter how big the Goliath looks in front of you, you are guaranteed victory. Now that's exciting. When you can see it with that right perspective, it doesn't take you aback and make you all flustered and confused when spiritual warfare comes. You just know, oh, it's time for me to get another crown of victory, another trophy, because we can't have victory if there's no battles. Amen? So, there was more spiritual warfare, more obstacles um, um, trying to stop us from having church on this Sunday than ever before. So I was the most expectant, God was revealing to me, he's gonna move like we've never seen on this Sunday. And then we show up and there's the biggest obstacles there trying to keep us from having church. We're in a pan we're, we've been in a pandemic, we used to have church at Penn Pacific Park in a building. But ever since the pandemic, we can't be in buildings. So we went outside. We went outside at the park. But because of the pandemic, you cannot reserve spaces. Everything is like first come, first serve. So there was this big event going on at our amphitheater when we showed up. And there was, there was a lack, there was not understanding and really willingness to kind of understand that we had people even traveling to come here. So it would be so amazing if we could somehow share the space and maybe they could just shift over a little bit since they didn't really need the stage. And so there was a lot of struggle, a lot of struggle, a lot of obstacles. The enemy, it was clear the enemy did not want us to, to have church, did not want us to have church there. He knew what was coming. He knew what God was about to do. He knows the enemy the enemy is a spirit, so he 
knows all of the principles in the spiritual realm. He knows where anointing is. He knows where the power of God is. The power of God is not everywhere. As we see in the book of Acts, it says Apostle Paul was doing such extraordinary miracles that people would bring handkerchiefs, pieces of cloth to him, touch his skin, his anointed skin, carrying the power of God inside his body. And they would take the handkerchief and lay it on sick people. And the Bible says that the sick people would be healed and that demons would be cast out of people just from this cloth that touched the area where anointing was, the location of where anointing was. This is Acts 19, 11. Acts 19, 11. God kept releasing a flow of extraordinary miracles through the hands of Paul. Because of this, people took Paul's handkerchiefs and articles of clothing, even pieces of cloth that had touched his skin, laying them on the bodies of the sick. And diseases and demons left them and they were healed. So the devil knew that there's power of God here at Revival in the Park in Los Angeles, California. And um, one of the girls who's in the video from Massachusetts, she shared her, her testimony, which I will post soon. She shared her testimony. They shared the reasons of why they came. And in her testimony, she said that she faced so much spiritual warfare coming here. She said that even her um, pastor was telling her to not come, um, which was which happened the same exact day where I was sharing on, this was Thursday, I was sharing to all of you about how um, you must have a childlike heart to perceive God's ways and to see him and to see how he moves. And if you don't have a childlike, humble heart, your eyes are shut in the spiritual realm. You literally cannot see Jesus. You cannot see where he's moving. Um, and the devil comes as an angel of light. The Bible says that. What does that mean? It means he will come speaking what you think are godly things, which are really like religious things, not really godly, in making it sound like God. And they will be so convinced, they'll be so convicted, this is God's will, this is God's voice. And this is a scheme of the enemy to demonize where God's really moving, to try to block people from receiving from God. That was the devil's strategy on that day for this girl, for this woman. Um, she was about to be set free. And the enemy knew what would happen. The enemy knew what would happen if she came here. So he speaks as an angel of light to this person, in this case, it was a pastor even, saying, don't go. Um, and this is exactly what, it was what was powerful is that this happened to her on Thursday when I was actually preaching about this. So this is the goodness of God for her. Look at God, like God knew that her, and many of you too, this is probably going on in the spiritual realm for many of you too, but for her specifically, he was like, okay, I see that my daughter and others, you watching, need this word right now because there's a strategy of the enemy to keep them from receiving. So they need this word right now. This is the power of prophetic ministry, prophetic anointing. That it's not like, okay, I'm gonna come up with, okay, I'm preaching this, this week, this week, this week, this week, this week, this week, but really be like being flowing with God. God, what do your people need to hear? What do you want me to say? And this is prophetic anointing. So, um, this is what we see in the Bible with the Pharisees who were religious elite people, pastors of that day, like famous pastors of that day. Um, they were demonizing Jesus. They were saying he's using power of the devil to cast out demons. And some were even saying that he is um, demon possessed himself. They were saying that about Jesus. So imagine how that would be confusing people around them who looked up to them as religious, respectable, elite people, right? This is a strategy of the enemy. 
Um, and these Pharisee people were, were, were saying things like, he, this is proof that he's not from God because he's healing people on the Sabbath. So like the angel of light was coming to them saying, hey, look, this is the Bible and he's not doing that. If you have a childlike, humble heart, you would look to Jesus, not first judging and skeptical, but you would hear the testimonies of the miracles happening. You would hear, there's this guy in town who miracles are happening like we've never seen. People are being healed. I've heard testimonies myself. And someone reports to you telling you this. When you first hear this, if you have a childlike open heart, you'll be like, Wow, what's a child? How does a child respond? With faith, with, with belief, not for skepticism, but belief. Wow, that's amazing. Huh, I want to check this out. I want to see this for myself. Wow, maybe God is really moving here. Um, but if you do not have a childlike heart, you, you will immediately be like, well, that's weird we're the religious people how come we don't know about this what's going on this is this doesn't sound like the religious rituals and traditions that we've done before and then you go and look with this skeptical heart not an open heart and you say oh, yep i knew it i knew it he's healing people on the sabbath and there's he's not allowed to heal people on the sabbath so yep oh, he's from the devil and the bible talks about how jesus talks about how um when the, when the disciples came back to him after ministering, he sent them out to go minister after being trained by Jesus and, and mentored by him and learning from him and receiving impartation from him. Jesus sent them out to do ministry and they came back and they say, wow, God, wow, Jesus, even the demons obeyed us in your name. They were amazed. And, and then Jesus goes and he praises the Father right after that. He says, Father, I praise you, Lord, that you've given this precious gift of authority, of power, of the secrets of the kingdom, the deep things, the things that the, the keys to unlock the kingdom. I praise you, God, that you've only given these to those who have childlike hearts, pure hearts. And not those who are like the Pharisees, not those who have calloused hearts. The Bible says that there will be people who have eyes, but they cannot see in the spiritual realm. They have ears, but they cannot hear in the spiritual realm. They have calloused over hearts, it says. They've hardened their hearts. So um, this is how it works today. We can either be childlike or we can be like the Pharisees. And this is not something to take lightly. The Bible talks about how there will be some who say, Lord, Lord, but I never knew them. And they'll be like, but I was doing miracles for you. I was serving you, God. I was, I, what? What do you mean you don't know me and I don't get to go to heaven? What do you mean? This is what it says in the Bible, Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does the will of my Father. So this is serious business to make sure you're doing the will of the Father. This is, a, this is very serious. This is not something to take lightly. We should never be quick to be skeptical, critical. We should never be quick to talk against where God might be moving. The unforgivable sin is to blasphemy the Holy Spirit. So if someone's talking against the true move of God, the true work of God, that's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And it's this, it's, 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 it's the worst sin, the unforgivable sin, because it's, keeping people from receiving from God. When you say, don't go and receive, don't go there, or don't go there, it's, it's from the devil there. 
like what the Pharisees were doing. Um, you're leading people astray. You're keeping people from receiving from God. That's the worst thing we could do. Better to be silent than do that. When you're childlike, you're, you're, you're slow to speak, quick to listen. Slow to speak, quick to listen, quick to go and say, huh, haven't heard of this before. That's new, but huh, I want to look into this myself. Huh. You look at the fruit of someone. If someone's full of peace and joy, if they share a testimony that they've been blessed, you better not ever say it's the devil. You will know them by the fruits. The Bible says. So if someone shares a testimony that they've been blessed by a certain ministry, by a certain minister, that they've received a miracle, that they feel closer to God, better not be quick to speak against that minister or that work of God. It's, it's serious business. Serious business. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father. <laughs> and so it was revealed to the, the girl who came to Revival in the Park who was so discouraged by her pastor and was going through so much spiritual warfare to get here, so many obstacles to get here. Um, it became very obvious to her and to all of us why the enemy did not want her to come here. So when I prayed for her, and this is in the video, when I prayed for her, um, she fell back with the power of God and then demons, start, demons started to manifest where her body was convul convulsing, shaking, and um, starting even to like spit out like a, 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 a feeling of throwing up. And you could see in this moment that the demon was coming out by the power of God. And when that happens, see demon, demons hide. And when they become close to anointing to the power of God, it makes them to be unable to hide. Why do they want to hide? Well, if they hide there, then they can't be removed. Then people won't know that the devil exists, that demons exist. The devil is terrified of, of people knowing the truth about the spiritual realm. Take, take America, for instance, like all of these mental illnesses, all of these sicknesses, um, suicide, everything, spirit of suicide, suicidal thoughts, it's all demonic. It's all a spirit hiding. And they need to come out by the power of God. People shooting people. It's because the devil is speaking to them so loud. There was this shooting recently about um, a guy. He's saying that um, it was a sex addiction that led him to go kill people. Okay, this is obviously a demon telling him to do this. He has a sexual addiction. The addiction is a demon, is a spirit. And when you have a demonic spirit, it can't be removed by natural means. You can try to cover it up and the demon will hide deeper and deeper. Like, yeah, yeah, see it's working, see it's working. The cover up, the medicine, whatever is working. But he's still hiding. Only Jesus can remove it. Only the power of Jesus can remove it. So you take like a sexual addiction. This is, is, is a, a spirit that needs to be gone, that needs to be removed. So the, the devil is so evil. And so what he does is he inflicts people with, let's say, addiction. And then you have the addiction, bound by the addiction, and you don't want to have the addiction. And you try really hard to stop the addiction. But the devil will then speak to you. Uh, uh, lies of condemnation, shame. It will speak to you. You're not a good enough Christian that you can't stop this. What's wrong with you? 
You're doing this again. You should feel so ashamed of yourself. God's so disappointed in you. You're worthless. You should just die. Like all of these lies come that come in the form of thoughts. But you see the devil, it's the devil doing that. And then the devil's beating you up for what he's doing. Not even what you're doing once you're in bondage. Once you're in bondage. Once you're in bondage, if you're in real bondage, like a yoke, only the anointing can break that. So even if you try so hard, even if you worship, pray, read the Bible, go to church, you need the power of God to break that still. Like the the girl who came, she was in bondage. She needed deliverance. And she was going to a church and she's praying in the spirit and she loves Jesus so much. But she needs the power of God to break the yoke. She needs the power of God to deliver her, to set her free, the power of God. And the power of God is not everywhere. It's not in every church. So this, this, anyways, this, this guy that went to, went to kill people, it's, it's demons. It's a demon that told that that made him bound by a sexual addiction, and then it's another demon that made him feel so much shame, so worthless about himself, and then it's another demon that bombarded his mind saying, "Go kill people, go kill people because when you do that, it'll get rid of your addiction. I promise you that you will be free. You will be free when you kill these people that are that are helping your addiction go on." Is what the lies say. Lies going on and on and on and on in the mind. And this guy belongs to a church. He belongs to a church. If this doesn't show you that we need the power of God in the church, I don't know what does. If the power of God is in the church, if he, if he could have been, if that guy could have been at revival in the park, he could have been set free and there would be no murder. Mur- there would be no people dead. This is a serious business to do things God's way. We have to do things God's way. Um, so back to the story of, of the girl. So she was on the ground and you could see the demon start to like take over. And this is what happens in the Bible where they, they completely take over the person where the person's like not there consciously anymore um, because the power of God, the anointing, the presence of God, Jesus makes the demons to tremble. And this is what we see in the Bible, Mark 5. Um, it says, when Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit, a demon, came from the tombs to meet him. Um, He had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus, wow, so here we see he was cutting himself with stones. So here we see a spirit in him was telling him to self-harm himself. That's where that comes from. It comes from a spirit saying, do this, do this. It will make you feel better. So um, verse six, when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me? Jesus, son of the most high God, in God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, come out of this man, you impure spirit. So Jesus could see there was a spirit inside. And so he spoke to the spirit inside the man, not the man, the spirit inside the man come out of this man. And then the demons overtook the person because the power of God was so strong. They could not hide anymore. The devil was exposed and he said, and it said, what do you want with me? Jesus, Notice that they can recognize Jesus. So um, what do you want with me? Don't torture me. And then Jesus says, what is your name? Says to the spirit inside the man. Um, 
Verse 9, my name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he, because a legion means tons and tons, thousands. And, we, and he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. There was a large herd of pigs nearby and the demons begged Jesus. So the demons are speaking through the man saying, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. So they're saying, we don't want to die. We want to inhabit another body is what they are saying. They know the power of Jesus is so strong that they stand no chance of staying in this body. So they spoke to Jesus, no, please don't kill us. Just send us in the pigs. And so Jesus says, okay. So he sends them out of the man and into the pigs. And this is what happens. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. So once the demons went in the pigs, the demons then made them to die, made them to kill themselves and drown. So um, this is the power of Jesus, that, that demons tremble, they manifest, they cannot hide anymore when the true power of Jesus is there, true anointing is in their presence. So this is why the enemy worked so hard to keep her from coming because he knew she would be set free. And so as she's laying there and the demons just are taking over, it was, they, she was coughing, like trying to throw up and because it was coming out. And I then said to the demons, I said, what are you trying to do to her? What are you doing? What are you doing to her? And through her, they he spoke. It spoke. The demon spoke. I don't want her to preach the word of God. And I said, say it again. I put the mic up. Said it again. I don't want her to preach the word of God. So that demon was tormenting her filling her with fear, filling her with uh, a doubt and depression and all sorts of things, trying to keep her from being free, bold, courageous, full of peace and joy and focused and confident to release the word of God. The enemy can see how powerful she is in the gift in her that she has, the, how powerful she will be when she is used by God, when she preaches the word. And so this is why he was afflicting her so much. This was the reason. Wow, this shows the power of when we preach the word of God. Wow. So, so, I, the, the, the Bible says that when you command demons to leave, they will leave when you carry the power of God, when you are given the authority. Remember, Jesus said after the disciples came back, they said, wow, Jesus, um, wow, Jesus, the demons even obeyed us in your name. And Jesus says to them right after this, he says to them, He replies to them. It says, Lord, even the demons obeyed us when we commanded them in your name. Verse 18, Jesus replied, while you were ministering, I watched Satan topple until he fell suddenly from heaven like lightning to the ground. Now you understand that I have imparted to you my authority to trample over his kingdom. You will trample upon every demon before you, everyone, and overcome every power Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing will harm you as you walk in this authority. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
This is what he said to his disciples. This is what he has said to his disciples of today. The same thing applies. All authority has been given. Every demon must go, must obey. So I commanded them to stand up. I said, stand up, stand up. And they now they had overtaken her at this point because of the power of God. So she was not there. It was the demons. So she, they did not want to look at me. So when they stood up through her body, they were looking this way and I was here. I said, look at me, look at me. And he looked at me. And I said, just one time, get out of her in the name of Jesus. And when I said that, she, they, they fleed immediately and the power of them fleeing out of her body made her to fall hard. She's okay. She's okay. It, it, there was someone there to help and um, soften her fall. Even she fell right, her head was right on the foot of um, one of the gentlemen in our church. So, um, but like it was so, I didn't touch her, nothing. But the moment I said that, she went hard down, like boom. Like you could see the force of them going, the force of her, her, them going. Boom, she was free. And then when she was laying there, immediately, complete peace. I mean, she was so peaceful. She was so peaceful. Her body was just, you can see in this video clip, I just posted very, very quickly, just so peaceful. You can see they're gone. Before her body was like convulsing and you know, but now peaceful, peaceful, peaceful. And Jesus freed her. Jesus freed her. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I shared on Wednesday, I was doing a Facebook live, um, like an interview Facebook live session. And I was asked about compassion and I, and I shared the importance of compassion as you minister. And I shared this story, this testimony of mine, how when God had first called me to be an apostle, I went to this church where the power of God really was moving and the minister was a prophet and he was my mentor and um, he carried powerful anointing of God. And um, I witnessed demons manifest in people and completely overtake their body and I witnessed them speak, I'm trying to kill her, them speaking out of the person. Um, saying specifically what they are doing to torment the person. Um, and, and then I saw the power of God move through this prophet and say, go, just simply go. And the demons flee and the person's completely free. I saw just what I saw on Sunday. I saw this years ago. And when I witnessed this, it changed my life completely, just witnessing this. It humbled me so much. It brought me to a place of literally not wanting to talk, being so reverent before God. Like, I can't even speak. Like, you're so holy. I'm just so in awe of you, Jesus, that I, I can't, I'm not even worthy to speak right now. We had to like introduce ourselves to the church and I didn't even want to like, it, I didn't, I was just literally speechless. And witnessing this changed my life and opened up my eyes to how amazing God's love is like never before. Because number one, I knew the devil was evil, but to hear how he's afflicting people, to hear the demons speak how they're tormenting people, open my eyes to see how evil the devil is how 
hard he is at work to torment people. And at the same time, I see that Jesus desires to and has the power to free the people who are oppressed, who are possessed, simply by his power in one moment. The person does not have to do anything. God can just free them because of his love. This opened up my eyes to the love of God like never before witnessing this because, you know, I think many people are not in love with Jesus, are missing revelation of the love of Jesus because there is a lot of confusion of why bad things happen to good people, for example, of why they see themselves suffering in their lives and why family members suffer in their lives, etc. And it brings this confusion and lack of clarity about God's goodness and his love. Well, if he's created the whole world and everything, how come he can't do anything about this? This is what keeps people in love with Jesus, keeps them from being in love, keeps them from seeing him rightly. But when I witnessed this, it opened up my eyes immediately to see that God desires to free his people more than anything. And he has the power to do it. He can do it and he will do it. The thing is, is that there is order. There is a way for this to happen. God has his will. He will not bow to our will. He has his way. He will not bow to our way. We have to do things God's ways to see him move. I've seen this in my life. I am overwhelmed by how I have found complete freedom, healing in my life, complete abundance. Every aspect of my life, I'm finding abundant life in to the point where I'm experiencing so much joy and peace every day that I'm pinching myself. Why? Because by the grace of God, God opened up my eyes, prepared me to have a childlike, humble heart, opened my eyes to see who he really is, how he really moves, his way, his will, his order, his principles. This is how to access the kingdom. This is God's way. This is how we must do things, how we must have church, how we are a disciple of God, a true disciple. This is the way. And when we do things God's way, we will receive complete freedom from every demonic oppression, complete healing, complete abundance in every area of your life life. I am a living, breathing, walking testimony of this. And I am so passionate for your eyes to open up because God's heart is for you to receive complete freedom, healing, and abundant life in every area. But the only way is to do it God's way. For example, the Pharisees did not receive the abundant life that Jesus wanted to give them. They did not because they hardened their hearts. They weren't humble. They weren't childlike. To access the kingdom, we have, it, 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 the things of the kingdom are hidden. They are hidden. Remember, Jesus says, I thank you, Father, that you've only revealed, you've only revealed these secrets to those who will become like a child. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, because this way, your power is not abused. 
Imagine if we just live life how we want, do church how we want, and God heals, blesses, delivers. He's not true to his word. We will never learn. We will never be doing things God's way and being able to really be used by him if he were to go against his word and, and divert from his way, his order, and do things our way, how we please. The enemy has tried to keep, the enemy has strategically, strategically tried to, tried so hard to keep people blinded to these truths of the spiritual realm that the power of God is real, that we have authority in Christ, that really Jesus can do anything, any kind of miracle, that demons exist. This is a strategic plan of the enemy because when we don't know these things and when we're resistant to these things, calling them creepy and weird and of the devil, then we're not doing things God's way. We're unable to receive. Devil gets to hide. Devil gets to stay. This is a strategic plan of the enemy. Jesus wants to free his people so badly. And I, I feel his heart so much like many of you um, have been feeling like, why am I not afraid of this? Why, why, why? You know, I've been praying so much. What is, what's going on? And, and I just want freedom so much. I just want healing so much. And I see God saying, I want it more than you do, more than you do. And I've led you here today. I've led you here today. I've led you here today to find me for your eyes to open so you could get in line with my ways so you can actually access me, access my kingdom, access my power, access the miracle, the freedom, freedom, the healing. Hallelujah. God wants to free you right now because this power of God is here. We saw not one person be freed, not just one person be freed on Sunday, but multiple multiple and you can see in the video i just posted multiple people were set free by the power of jesus this power of jesus is here right now and he wants to set you free every chain must be broken and every demon must bow to the name of jesus thank you lord I declare every spirit of depression to go out of every person watching now with this spirit out now in Jesus' name. Go. Go now. Look here. Look here in my eyes. Go now. In Jesus' mighty name. The spirit that torments you, telling you to harm yourself, telling you to abuse your body, telling you to not eat, telling you to exercise unhealthily too much, Go now in Jesus' name. Be free in the mighty name of Jesus now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Spirit of anxiety, spirit of fear, go now in Jesus' name. Spirit of suicidal thoughts, go 
now in Jesus name. Spirit attacking who you are as a beloved child of God, speaking against who you are, speaking against your identity, against your worth. I declare, go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. God is freeing so many of you right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for touching your people. I see God coming upon many of you right now. Every demonic spirit must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Every mental disorder spirit, every spirit attacking your mind, affecting your behavior, affecting how you think, affecting how you speak, affecting how you see reality. I declare it to go now in Jesus' name. Be free now. All of you go out now in Jesus' mighty name. Out now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for freeing your people, Jesus. Thank you for freeing your people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Every spirit that is behind a sickness causing migraines, causing a heart disease, causing a skin problem, causing pain in your body, I declare every spirit of sickness, of infirmity, go now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I speak healing to everybody now. Every sick body be healed now. Every pain go out now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Every person here who has chronic pain from an injury, I declare healing to you. I declare everything in your body to be restored, every ligament, bone to go back in place. I see God touching cells, like cells in your body. Some of you have like sickness in your cells. Some have cancer cells. I declare every sick cell, go. Be healed. Be healed now. Every cancer, every disease, every sickness, get out of your body now in Jesus mighty name. Every tumor get out in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.